What's up YouTube, Ace Poker back again for another video and wow, we have a special, crazy, jam-packed episode today. We are heading over to Bellagio. Honestly, I was so looking forward to playing at the Bellagio because all my life I've watched Brad Owen and so many other vloggers play there. It was definitely on my bucket list. So we're meeting up with Frankie from Next Gen Poker to play a session there with him. We're gonna hop into some 510 and we're gonna have a nice friendly challenge to see who can make more money. Should be very interesting for the vlog. We got a lot of crazy hands. Spoiler alert, this is after the session, so just wow. Strap in, let's head over to Frankie to see what he has to say about this challenge. What's up guys, I'm Frankie, better known as Next Gen Poker. I'm coming off hot of a Max Pay Monday win and there's no chance Ace takes me down. I'm taking it today. Sounds like we're gonna have to hand a beat into our new friend Frankie. We walk up to the poker room. I am so excited, the emotions are just flowing. Like I said, I've been so excited to play here. We check out the Legends room, the absolute legendary room, no pun intended, that we've always seen out of Brad Owen and other vloggers. I can't wait to get started, and I'm even especially extra nervous on top of this challenge because we are playing 5-10, and when I sit down, they tell me there's a $20 straddle as well. So let's go, 5, 10, 20, let's win this thing. For this first hand here, we look down at Queen 10 offsuit. Obviously, nowhere near a good hand, but our good friend Frankie raises under the gun to $40. When there's one caller ahead of me, I decide to put in the call as I'll have position on both of those players. And I definitely want to get in the mix against Frankie, maybe cooler him, maybe get in a nice pot against him, and the button comes along as well. So we're going four ways to a flop in which we flop top pair, but obviously we have basically little to no kicker it's a board that is going to definitely be better for him he's going to have a lot of ace king king queen queens jacks still aces and kings so when he continues to bet for a hundred dollars here and the next player folds and it's on me it's actually a pretty gross spot i don't want to just flat call here and then just give him free range to just fire away on the turn if he has ace king I also just want to feel out where I am right now, so I decided to put in a nice little 2.5x raise to $250. The button folds, and now Frankie starts thinking. He's in the tank, he's in the tank, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what have I got myself into here on the very first hand? I think by doing this, it'll actually save me some money on future streets if I am beat here, because, you know, he'll play it pretty passively on the next couple streets as well. But if I'm not beat here and I am ahead, it'll allow me to take control of the pot and take it down. But after a little while, he releases, and I show a queen, and he tells me he had one as well. I don't know, maybe we got him to fold a better queen. Maybe he thinks that we're tight. Who knows, maybe we got this one through. Nice to win the first pot, and it looks like I'm gonna start this challenge up on him. For the next hand, we look down at the beautiful pocket kings. It's always nice to get an absolute premium when you're stepping it up in stakes. As an added plus, we're also on the button, so we're going to be in position of everyone. There's one limp, I decide to raise it up to 50, and just the limper calls. So we're going heads up to what looks like a pretty good flop, and when the limper checks, I want to go big here, so I decide to bet the size of the pot for $110. I would want to go big with ace king of hearts, king queen of hearts, my aces, my kings, so it's nice to go this big when I have an actual hand. Perhaps this limper thinks that I am weak, perhaps he thinks he can rule over me, but he shoves it in my face and decides to go all in. And as you guys see, he's sitting across from me, you can see his chip stack, it is not a small all in, we are not playing 2-5 anymore. I didn't ask for a count, but that looks to be 900, 1100, 1000 dollars. And immediately, my mind goes to flush draw. If he had a super good hand, like a straight, a set, two pair would he just go all in here and just scare off every single one of my hands even if i had ace 10 it'd be hard for me to call here and i think he knows that the only hands that i could really call off here are aces kings queens maybe jacks if i like i said am putting him on a flush draw i think he's trying to push me around and i am here to stay i am here to battle i did not come here to get pushed around all right i mean this is disgusting if you have me beat but i call one thought Oh boy, I gotta feed the world, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm literally dying laughing watching this back. Did you guys hear how fast he said one time? He didn't even hear my cards yet. Like, what the heck? In real time, I actually called really fast, and my opponent has the world. He has a double gutter to a 5 or a 9, as well as the flush draw, so we have to fade it all here. As you see on the graphic, we are actually a slight underdog. So, as my heart starts beating faster and faster, this pot has ballooned up to over $2,000 and all we need to do is fade a gut shot straight and a heart. Can we do it? 
the turn comes, a queen, the reality sets in, we could be up over $1,500 and maybe have a lock on this win over Frankie. Slightly wanting to impress my new friend, I'm hoping that I can hold, the river comes, the dreaded heart. My soul is crushed. I am just so frustrated. After my tournament win, cash has just been downhill. I cannot seem to get a win. I cannot seem to win a pot. I am so deflated. And yeah, our little challenge against Frankie might be an epic failure as now we are down over a thousand dollars and I watch all my chips that I just bought at the cage get shipped across the table. Uh, Alright, but it's early in the session, we're gonna have to battle back, let's strap in, lock in, add on, and let's battle. We teleport a bit later, still just not feeling great from that hand and not on my A game. Frankie limps under the gun and the hijack now raises it up to $40 and he's been raising a lot, playing very loose. So I decide to raise, I guess slightly for value and more of a bluff to $120, put in the good old 3 bet. I know I don't 3-bet much with Ace-2, 3, 4, 5, but here's an opportunity to do so, and in a bigger game, so it is slightly more intimidating, it folds back to the initial raiser who puts in the call. We see a god-awful flop, one that just really should not be hitting my 3-betting range, but nonetheless, when he checks it over to me, I decide to put in a bet here. I don't really like it, I could definitely have some strong hands that I check back here, so it would be nice to have some weak ones to do so. I do think if I check though, he's going to fire a lot of turns, so it would be pretty gross unless I hit an ace. So I don't really mind continuing to have control over this hand. I bet out for $80 and he puts in the call. And we get that lucky turn card. After getting very unlucky in the last hand, this one definitely feels nice. When he checks, there's no reason to stop betting now. I bet, but on the smaller side to 150 and again, he puts in the call. So I'm planning to check back most rivers, and this one is no exception. He checks, I just take my ace to showdown, and it's good. So it's nice to get just a little bit of rebate from the last hand. Of course, the higher stakes are nice, as this wasn't a big pop by any means, but we do pick up about $300, which always feels good. We then move seats and start to do a $30 bomb pot every dealer change. At these higher stakes, they do time instead of rake. Let me know what you guys think of that down below. They take time every 30 minutes instead of just, I guess, not knowing what the rake is. I prefer rake. I also want to know if you guys like this center view more than the end view. I personally think the ends provide a better experience, but if you guys like the center, maybe I'll sit at the center more. Let me know down below. For this bomb pot, we get king jack, and as you guys can see the flop up close and personal, we whiff and we're on to the next hand. For the next hand, we look down at my favorite hand, Ace King. Yeah, completely kidding. You guys know how much I love that one, but there's an open to $70. I still decide to put in the 3 bet here to $220. It folds back to him, and I didn't realize he only had about $100 more. He goes all in, I obviously snap call. So we're headed to the flop, not sure what we're up against. And boom, Ace King Queen, hopefully not Queens or Jack 10. The run out comes, it looks clean, and we chop. Ah, like I've said, I can never win with Ace King, at best I can chop, so I guess it's better than a loss. Buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, we look down at 5-6 suited in the $20 straddle. Now, our good friend Frankie decides to raise to $60, it folds around to us. Obviously, we're getting in there with the suited connector against him, let's try to win a big one, we make the call, and oh my goodness, strap in. We flop a flush draw, as well as a backdoor straight draw, so we've got a lot. I check it over to him, planning to check raise because he's been c-betting a lot, but he soils our plan as he checks back. Now the turn makes it even worse as it pairs the board, I check it over to him and he bets $90. Does it make any type of sense to raise here? I don't think so. Am I going to have 4s? Yeah, I could have some 4s if I had 4-5 suited, 3-4 suited, pocket 4s. But, I don't know, I just make the call after a long think, and boom, we river the flush. My friend Frankie has not seen me play. I've been playing pretty much standard and to the book this entire time. He obviously knows I'm a vlogger, obviously knows that I know the game. I know that he knows that I know the game, yada yada yada, the I know, she know, he know game. <laughs> so, I want to do something very out of the ordinary and put Frankie in the blender. I bet $340, you guys heard that right, you guys saw that right, and Frankie snap calls me, so I show the flush, and he shows me a 4, oh my goodness, 
that's disgusting. Now I'm feeling kind of stupid because if I checked, he obviously would have bet. I would have raised, and he might have called because my line just didn't make any sense just as much as it didn't make any sense to just bet out huge on the river. Obviously, him having the four makes me feel stupid, but I think he's going to have plenty of aces, kings, queens. Maybe he has ace 10, 9, 10. Who knows? I just, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. I didn't think you had a four. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you had a four. Regardless, we win a massive pot off of our friend, and we might have evened the scoreboard a little bit for our challenge. I believe he's up only a little bit now, and I'm only slightly down, maybe about $300 now. So let's go. We're closer, and let's catch up all the way. What's this? We have $60 in front of us. Why is that? We have pocket queens. We are under the gun, or whatever you want to call it, when you're next after the straddle. So like I've said, we're playing 5, 10, 20. I'm first to act. I decide to raise it up to $60. And the player to my direct left 3 bets me right away to $180. A slightly smaller sizing considering that there is a straddle in play. Feeling a bit strange as this is very strong and this player has been playing a bit tighter all night. I decided to put in the call, don't really want to put in the 4 bet right away here. Maybe it's the stakes, but I'm telling you, something was going off in my mind. Maybe it was the fresh king's cooler earlier this session, and running queens into aces already yesterday, which was two videos ago. I just flat call here. And as you guys see, the flop is 10-7-4. I guess it can't get any better than that, unless he has pocket 10s or pocket 7s, but I decided to check it over to him to see what he wants to do. And now he decides to go smaller-ish again as he bets out for $220. And I would like to employ a tactic that I did on the very first hand with the queen 10. I want to see where I'm at and also get some value from those pocket jacks. Possibly if he has something like king jack of spades, he could stack off here. We could get into another situation like we did with the kings earlier. I decided to raise this one up right away to $650. I like the sizing. It's right about 3x. It's going to put my opponent into a tough decision. If he has aces or kings, he's probably just going to jam right here, as well as potentially with the king jack suited and hands of that nature. A flat call will be very, very concerning because I've shown a lot of strength myself raising under the gun and now raising this flop. So my opponent thinks about it for a really long time, hops in the tank and decides to call. And now we see probably the worst card in the deck on the turn, the ace of spades. Not only does he get there if he somehow had ace king, if he had a flush draw, he also gets there. Now there are just so many hands that beat us that we were slightly ahead of on the flop. I also just do not have the queen of spades, so that's a card that I would love to have here, which would reduce the possibilities that he had a flush. And I also would be able to bluff jam this if he did say potentially have kings, jacks, Maybe he wouldn't even like this if he flopped a set of 10s. Fully aware that this is showing a lot of weakness and leaving the door wide open for a massive bluff here, I decided to check it over to my opponent and now he hops in the tank and after a long, long tank himself, he decides to check back. Are queens good here? Does he have a low to medium pocket pair that just does not believe me? That would be amazing. Let's see a river. The river 6 does absolutely nothing and once again, I decide to check and now my opponent snap checks it back and shows pocket kings. Extremely disgusting and honestly my raise on the flop might have saved me some money or might not have because if I just call I don't know if my opponent bets that turn we might just go check check and then check check on the river. So might have lost $400 that I just did not need to. Nonetheless an inevitable poker cooler and we just cannot keep things going in the right direction. But let's see if we can battle back for the last half of the session. For this next hand, we look down at ace nine suited in the $20 straddle. It folds all the way to the button who raises to $70. We are going to defend this one here. We can use this as a three bet, but like I said, I like to use my ace two, three, four, five, ace king, ace queen, ace jack, ace 10, ace nine is just that weird one where it's a suited ace that I don't wanna fold and I don't wanna three bet. So that just leaves a call. We flop a 9 on 10, 9, 3, rainbow. I check it over to him, and now he just bets $60. A little strange, but I just flick in the call. Obviously, not going to call ace 9, hit a 9, and then fold. The turn is pretty good. It reduces the chance that he has pocket 3s, or, you know, say 10, 3, or 9, 3. Not that I would think he would have that, but, you know, just reduces the chances. 
I check it over once again, and now he bets $260, which is, uh, you know, a bit more than slightly concerning. It's very concerning. But I am not in the folding mood as this session has just been going off of for me. I'm not getting pushed around. Is a 10 going to be betting this big here? I don't think so. I think it's a lot of combo draws such as Queen Jack of Spades, King Jack of Spades. Maybe he's got a 9 himself. The river looks pretty clean to me. I check it over once again, but thankfully he snap checks it back. I say I've got a 9, and he says me too, and thankfully that means that we are going to beat him as we have the best 9. I show ace 9, and he says that he had king 9, so he did try to put me in a tough spot, a tough decision. Thankfully I made the right choice, I made the right call, and thankfully he didn't bet big on the river or else I probably would have had to fold. And we are going back in the right direction, let's go. Chip stack is now finally looking decent as we're in for 23 and we've got about 19 or $2,000 in front of us. Not too bad, but we've still got some work to do. Let's keep going. This next hand is really crazy and I want you guys to really pay attention because it's just nuts. As you see, there's $60 in front of us and why is that? We have Ace King, my favorite hand. And now our new friend decides to 3-bet us up to $190. Again, somewhat on the smaller-ish side. If I didn't go crazy with queens, I am definitely not going crazy with ace-king, especially when it's not even suited, so I just flick in the call. Hoping to see an ace or a king to make life a little bit easier, but no, the flop is 4-4-6. Four, four, I check it over, and now Frankie decides to bet around $200, I believe. Makes it pretty easy for me, I decide to fold, and he slides me his cards to take a look just for myself really quick. Guess what you guys think that he has, and oh my goodness, he has pocket queens. Maybe I avoided disaster, and like I said, I just cannot win with ace-king. Maybe it saved me some money, because if I love the hand, there's definitely times when you can 3-bet this up, 4-bet this up, and thankfully, this was not one of them, as we escaped disaster. Alright, get ready for another crazy hand back-to-back, -back as we look down at jack-7 suited. We are in the $20 straddle, a player in early position raised it up to $60 and I just made the call and we flopped trips and I decide to check it over to the initial raiser, hoping that he bets maybe we'll set up a check raise which would be super weird on this board and I just don't think he would think that I would have a jack so you know just a little bit of mind games here but unfortunately he checks back and obviously when you're planning on check raising part of that plan is the other person betting so you know that doesn't happen it's just gonna check through. As if the flop wasn't good enough for us, we turn the boat, we turn the absolute best hand, and now I decide to bet out for $40. I think I should be betting a little bit bigger, but I chose 40 in the moment, and my opponent makes the call. I'm very happy to see an ace on the river, because I think a lot of the hands my opponent's going to have here is just ace-king, ace-queen that just floated and didn't believe us. So I want to go big here. I bet $250, and yet again, I get snap called on a huge river bet, and my opponent shows jack Eight. Are you kidding me? That's twice tonight that if I checked this river and then raised, we would have gotten a lot more value because I just don't think my opponent's going to be folding trips here. And although we win this pot, it feels like we win the minimum. Super frustrating, and I'm curious on your thoughts below how you guys would have played this. I think I definitely should check this river, but uh, I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being results oriented, but that's just how the hand went. Don't worry guys, I learned my lesson in this hand as we look down at 4-8 suited, yes, very wide. I was in the $20 straddle, somebody raised to $50, there was one call, and I decided to just put in the extra $30. I'm feeling very comfortable at the table, I've got a good feel at who I want to play against, how these players play, and I'll open up my ranges a bit when that happens. I decide to check the flop, the original raiser continues for $50 yet again, the other player folds and I make the call. The turn brings no help, I continue with the check, and now he checks back, so it looks like he might not have much, but let's see what the river brings. Now, we river the flush, and instead of betting big or betting out at all, I decide to put in the trap and check, and it actually works, as he cuts out and he bets pretty big for $210. I don't want to just call, although we have the 8 high flush, we have to be a little cautious, and the board is paired, so we don't have anywhere near the nuts but I am comfortable enough to go for value here. So I decide to raise this one up to $650 and my opponent hops in the tank. It's nice that we don't get snap called or snap raised and jammed on. 
So I do think that we have the best hand once my opponent does hop into the tank. Hopefully we can get called by a weak queen, maybe a strong queen, I don't know, anything that's not higher or better than an 8 high flush. But after a while he does release and fold. I show him the 8 of spades which might keep him thinking. Maybe we bluffed him, maybe we didn't, obviously we didn't. And things are really looking on the up and up as I think we may be out of the hole at this point. Unfortunately, it might be a little tough to beat someone at profit when they're making quads. Happy for him, but it's going to be tough to beat him. Let's lock in and finish this on a high note. For the last end of the night, we raise up Ace Jack suited to $60 and pick up two colors. So we're looking for yet another good board. And what do you know, we flop three of a kind yet again. There are two hearts out there and definitely a lot of straight draws possible so when the first player just leads right out into me for $70 I want to raise this one up right away but not too large I make it 220 and now the next player hops in the tank himself I'm like what the heck do these people have eventually he folds and the other player folds as well so unfortunately no more action but it's nice to wrap up and end the session on a win. Let's head to the outro with me and Frankie to see what happened, who won, how much I won, how much he won. Cash out and see. Let's see what the ladies at the front says. All right. Moment of truth. Uh, I'm not even to look what mine is. I'm just going to see what yours is first. <laughs> you, it's 25 cents. Okay, my man. I'll look at mine. <laughs> 55 red, 75 blue. 69. Okay. 25, 69. 25, 69? Uh, Let's go. <laughs> we didn't even like the thing is we didn't even like set like some crazy challenge or just like for fun we're going back and i was <laughs> dude i was down 700 with 45 minutes left and you were yeah, down like yeah. i was down like 1.5 yeah 1.5 with about 20 minutes into the session that's so. insane <laughs> well uh make sure you leave a like subscribe days see you guys next time peace